Bay Area Fire Chief is on a mission to get people to install a very specific type of fire alarm in their homes. He says it could mean the difference between life and death. Action News reporter Brian Callahan has a look at the most common detectors and shows us why spending a little more money could give you a lot more security. Studies show that nearly two-thirds of all deaths in house fires happen in homes without working smoke detectors. And firefighters say that could be because people find their alarms annoying. If we have annoyance alarms or nuisance alarms, the homeowner may be uh, motivated to take the battery out, and we certainly do not want that to happen. The most common type of detector in American homes is the ionization alarm, which is more sensitive to light smoke. The ionization types are also perhaps a little bit more prone to what we call nuisance alarms, um, set off by maybe some cooking odors or something like that from the kitchen. Another reason the ionized detector is so popular is the price. There is a cheap one of like five ninety-five for a battery, and most people have those in their house. But the one that costs you a bit more in price could end up costing you much less in the long run. Both alarms look almost identical from the outside, but spending an extra five dollars on a photoelectric alarm could give your family up to fifteen minutes extra warning. What we're seeing is that the photoelectric type tends to respond more quickly to a smoldering type of fire. The photoelectric detector uses a light beam to detect thicker smoke from smoldering fires, which are often the most deadly. While firefighters would prefer that everybody have both types of detectors in their homes, they say any type of alarm is a lifesaver. Obviously, really encouraging people to use any type of smoke alarm, make sure that they're, they're properly maintained, properly installed. In Chico, Brian Callahan, Action News. If you have any questions about your smoke alarms, call your local fire department. The El Madeo Firefighters Association is taking sign-ups for the first ever Bryson Memorial Co-Ed Softball Tournament. The tournament is in memory of Captain Jeremy Bryson, who died in an alleged drunk driving accident in April. The goal of the tournament is to raise funds for the El Madeo Firefighters Association. The tournament will be held at the Nelson Softball Complex in Oroville on October 2nd and 3rd. The entry fee is $100 per team, and applications are due September 24th. Operation Green Paws is urging people to give a fiver for a tiger. It's a benefit for the Barry Kirshner Wildlife Foundation. The organization is, bringing, is being forced to relocate its 40 animals and desperately needs donations. So the president of Greenfeet.com has created a web page where visitors can donate $5 and receive coupons and discounts worth a lot more from about a dozen businesses. Do good work. I've been a volunteer out there for about 10 years, so I've been witness to all the wonderful things they do. Everything from the research they provide to the hands-on for all the special needs animals that have no other place to go. They also work with Make-A-Wish Foundation. A lot of people don't realize that. They've granted over 30 wishes for seriously ill children. Operation Green Paws can be found on the greenfeet.com website. We have a link on our website. Meanwhile, Action News will be asking for donations for the Kirshner Foundation live next Friday for National Wildlife Day. Community college students would have an easier time transferring into the California State University system under a bill approved by the state senate. The Senate unanimously approved legislation that would require community colleges to create degrees guaranteeing students can transfer with the status of junior. The bill's author says the current system costs students and schools extra money and says the bill provides certainty for students trying to get to a four-year college. It now heads to the governor's desk. And California counties could raise fees on marriage licenses by up to $10 to fund domestic violence shelters. That's under a bill that has been approved and is now being sent to the governor. Uh, the Senate was the last uh, house to approve that. Now, counties already collect a $23 fee on marriage licenses to fund domestic violence shelters. The bill approved yesterday lets county supervisors increase the fee to $33. Supporters say the increase would offset a drop in state funding that recently forced four shelters to close. The Senate also sent the governor a second domestic violence bill that would protect victims from retaliation by landlords if they're involved in a domestic violence dispute. California drivers who turn, turn right at a red light without fully stopping may soon face a greatly reduced penalty. The state assembly approved a bill that would impose a base fine of $35 for a driver who coasts through a red light while turning right. The current penalty is $100. The DMV says turning right without stopping is the most common red light violation, but it results in far fewer collisions than other violations. 
Critics of the bill say it will deprive the state of revenue and undermines public safety. The bill now goes to Governor Schwarzenegger's desk. And the governor is also These getting a bill friends. that would set strict limits on how much of the toxic metal cadmium can be used in children's jewelry. Cadmium is a known carcinogenic. Under the legislation, jewelry for kids six and under cannot contain anything over three hundredths of a percent of cadmium. That's starting in 2012. California becomes the fourth state legislature this year to pass cadmium in jewelry limits. Well, forget tie-dye. In Chico, it's all about the dirt. Action News reporter Audrey Assistio introduces us to one entrepreneur who's not afraid to get a little mud on his hands. It actually has dirt on it, and that's what makes it unique and rare. And again, you don't have to worry about keeping it clean. <laughs> After a recent visit to Hawaii, Chico resident David Dallas Rivers came up with an idea to create a one-of-a-kind souvenir, Chico dirt shirts. There's red dirt over there, and they make shirts, and I thought, why not use Chico dirt? So I brought it home with me from that idea. Using his backyard as his office, Rivers got down to business, literally. He began making shirts with Chico dirt he purchases from a local supplier. Basically, I'd throw dirt into a washing machine, mix it up, get it nice and muddy, and the dirt sticks to the shirts. Add a little vinegar, soap, and several more washes, and the shirts are ready to wear. Some people like it for a novelty shirt, older people, younger people. I actually made one called Dirt Squirts for the little kids. And in Chico began selling the shirts last month. Store managers say they've been a huge hit. It's been doing great. There's been a lot of interest. People are really excited. Uh, lots of visitors have been really excited about it. And uh, also the locals as well. It's been a great gift item for lots of the guys. And, you know, we've been selling out of sizes, but David's great. He brings them right back in. People love Chico. People love anything that is Chico. And so why not love the dirt as well and wear it? In Chico, I'm Audrey Assistio for Action News. Yeah, that's a, that was a dirty washing machine. It was. Too. It wow. Makes sense. <laughs> Adult size Chico dirt shirts sell for $25. The child size sells for 20 A science center and planetarium could be on its way to Turtle Bay in Redding. The Shasta County Board of Education, the SETI Institute, and Turtle Bay are exploring the possibility of building a science center with a planetarium at Turtle Bay. Talks are in the initial stages. The three organizations do share a common mission, science education. Turtle Bay has the foot traffic, the visitation of up to 150,000 visitors a year, and always looking for ways to enhance our education. So it seems like a real possible win-win-win situation. The SETI Institute operates a telescope array in eastern Shasta County, which scans the universe searching for extraterrestrial life. An unconventional event debuts at the Butte County Fair tonight, snowmobile drag racing. These race companies have modified snowmobiles to run on grass and dirt tracks. One-inch spikes are placed on the snowmobile tread to give it some traction. The racers take these supercharged sleds down the 300-foot track, reaching speeds above 80 miles per hour. The unique race allows them to use the snowmobiles year-round. Just trying to utilize them more than just in the, in the wintertime. We've got them set up to where we can cool them down after we make a pass because there is no snow. So. Okay. Little ice chests with pumps in them that circulate the water through it. So it's you're basically just cooling it down after you make a pass. Four wheelers will also be drag racing alongside the snowmobiles tonight. The race is in the main arena at the Butte County Fairgrounds starting at 6 p.m. And those were loud and fast. There, you were there. It, yeah, I got to see a little preview, so definitely worth seeing. That's I fun. thought, what are they doing without snow? That's but very yeah, weird. they made it work. <laughs> well, there's a battle brewing over new technology. On one side, the radio and music industries. On the other, the cell phone industry. More on why they're opposed on a proposed government mandate to put FM radio on all cell phones. And hackers are stepping up their attacks on Apple's iTunes. We'll show you what to do if you become the next victim. Nice cool down today, and we're not close to being done. I'll come back in just a bit. We'll talk about even cooler weather headed our way by the weekend, but Action News returns.